chapter 14, Felix Felicis, Heliot Herbology, first thing, the following morning. Başlamadan diyecek bir şeyim var mıydı acaba? Bir durayım, ne olur ne olmaz, bir durayım. Devam. He had been unable to tell Ron and Hermione about his lesson with Dumbledore over breakfast for fear of being overheard. But he filled them in as they walked across the vegetable patch toward the greenhouses. The weekend's brutal wind had died out at last. The weird mist had returned, and it took them a little longer than usual to find the correct greenhouse. Wow, scary talk, the boy, you know, who said it wrong quietly as they took their places around one of the gnarled snargaloof stumps that formed this term's project and began pulling on their protective gloves. But I still don't get why Dumbledore's showing you all this. I mean, it's, it's really interesting and everything, but what's the point? The nurse said he inserting a gum shield. But he says it's all important and it will help me survive. I think it's fascinating, said Hermione earnestly. It makes absolute sense to know as much about Voldemort as possible. How else will you find out his weaknesses? So how was Lagon's latest party, he asked her thickly through the gum shield. Oh, it was quite fun, really, said Hermione, now putting on protective goggles. I mean, he drones on about famous ex pupils a bit, and he absolutely phones on McLagan because he is so well connected, but he gave us some really nice food and he introduced us to Gwynok Jones. Gwynok Jones said Ron, his eyes widening under his own goggles. Dark Gwynok Jones, captain of the Holyhead Harpies. That's right, said Hermione. Personally, I thought she was a bit full of herself, but quite enough chat over here, said Professor Sprout briskly, bustling over and looking stern. You're lagging behind. Everybody else has parted, has started, and Neville's already got his first pot. They look around. Sure enough, there said Neville with a bloody lip and several nasty scratches along the side of his face, but clutching an unpleasantly pulsating green object about the size of a green fruit. Okay, Professor, you're starting now, said Ron, adding quietly when she had turned away again. Should have used Muffly Vator, Harry. No, we shouldn't. <laughs> no, we shouldn't, said Hermione at once, looking as she always did, intensely cross at the thought of the half blood prince and his spouse. Well, come on, we'd better get going. She gave the other two an apprehensive look. They all took the deep breaths and then died at the gnarled stump between them. It sprang to life at once, long, prickly. Bramble-like vines flew out of the top and whipped through the air. One tangled itself in Hermione's hair, and Ron beat it back with a pair of secateurs. It succeeded in trapping a couple of vines and knotting them together. A hole opened in the middle of all the tentacle-like branches. Hermione plunged her arm bravely into this hole, which closed like a trap around her elbow. Harry and Ron tugged and wrenched at the vines forcing the hole to open again, and Hermione snatched her arm free, clutching in her fingers a pot just like Neville's. At once, the prickly vines shot back inside, and the gnarled stump sat there looking like an innocently dead lump of food. Now it's a bayağı şey anladım ama hikayeye bir katkısı yok, devam. You know, I don't think I'll be having any of these in my garden when I've got my own place at Rome pushing his goggles up onto his forehead and wiping sweat from his face. Burada havalar serinledi falan. Artık öyle suratımı silip durmak zorunda kalmıyorum. Oturduğum yerden. Good news. Devam. Pass me a ball, said Hermione, holding the pulsating pod at arm's length. He handed one over and she dropped the pod into it with a look of disgust on her face. Don't be squeamish, squeeze it out, they're best when they're fresh, called Professor Sprout. Anyway, said Hermione, continuing their interrupted conversation as though a lump of wood had not just attacked them. Slagorn is going to have a Christmas party here, and there's no way you'll be able to wriggle out of this one because he actually asked me to check your free evenings, so he could be sure to have it on a night you can't come. Here he groaned. 
Meanwhile, Rome, who was attempting to burst up Paul in the ball by putting both hands on it, standing up and squishing it as hard as he could, said angrily, and this is another party just for Slagorn's favorites, is it? Just for the Slug Club, yes, said Hermione. The pot flew out from under Ron's fingers and hit the greenhouse glass, rebounding out of the back of Professor Sprout's head and knocking off her old patched head. He went to retrieve the pot. When he got back, Hermione was saying, Look, I didn't make up the name Slug Club. Slug Club, repeated Ron with a sneer worthy of Malfoy. It's pathetic. Well, I hope you enjoy your party. Why don't you try hooking up with McLagan? Then Slugon can make you king and queen slug. We're allowed to bring guests, said Hermione, who for some reason had turned a bright boiling scarlet. And if she gives the bag, the Hermione in Roma, Roma saved in a dial, the Tyler than Billy the Bird, Ron Nezaman, Sam Bunnozaman, Shunna Savior, Bunna Savior, and Jack to Tars David at this amount. Böyle şeye dönüşmesi. Çok kolay sinirlenmesi Ron'a zaten. Bir de böyle kızarıp durması falan. I don't know. Düşüneyim mi burada bir? Düşünmeyi düşüneyim mi falan gibi bir şey oldu. Düşüneyim ben. En de boşuna vakit harcamayalım. Nope. Devam. And I was going to ask you to come. But if you think it's that stupid then I won't bother. It is suddenly wished that Paul had flown a little farther so that he need not have been sitting here with the pair of them. Unnoticed by either, he seized the ball that contained the pod and began to try and open it by the noisiest and most energetic means he could think of. Unfortunately, he could still hear every word of their conversation. Ha, bunların bu sevgili ayakları şeyi olduğunu anladığı için böyle olabilecek. Ben duymayayım da ne olursa olsun, ben duymayayım da ne olursa olsun. Modunda durmaya falan çalışıyor herhalde. Ama duymaya devam ediyor falan. Evet, çünkü özellikle duymak istemiyor falan. Tamam, bu iş böyle. Ha, ben yine bir düşüneyim diyecek bir şey var mıdır buralı? Devam. You were going to ask me, ask Ron in a completely different voice. Hani bayağı bir etkilenmiş falan. <gülüyor> Çok iyi. Aslında bu bayağı şey bir yer. Önemli bir yer. Evet. Completely different voice diyor. Bayağı böyle şey etkilendi falan. Düşünmeye devam. Düşünmeye devam. Ama burada bildiğimiz hem hani bir adım atmış olmuyor mu aslında? Düpedüz böyle bunlar gidecekler. Güzel güzel giyinecekler falan. Sonra dans edecekler falan. Böyle Ron bayağı utanacak. Hem hani bayağı utanacak falan. Ama aslında birbirlerine boş olmadıklarının kanıtı gibi bir şey olacak. Ben şu an böyle bayağı bir önemli bir, <gülüyor> önemli bir adım atmıyor bu şu an her bölü aslında. Ha, Harun, Harun sen git Lavender'a falan git ya. Of Ron ya. Kız adımı atmış oğlum bildiğin şu an ya. Aa, bak bak bak completely different voice falan da diyor yani belli. Böyle, bu da kapmış yani olayı falan. Aa, Allah Allah ya, biraz daha düşünce. Ulan Ron, ben bile bu kadar kötü değilim herhalde. Şimdi onu düşünüyordum. Hani Ron'la kendimi çok benzetip duruyordum ya böyle. Ne olursa olsun asla açılma falan. Asla o içindeki hisleri dışarı vurma falan. Düpedüz teklif geldi yani ve doğru insandan falan. Falan. Aa, olaya bak ya. Git burada. Neyse devam gayri. Yes, said Hermione angrily. But obvious if you'd rather I hooked up with McLagan. There was a pause while he continued to pound the resilient pod with a trouble. Allah Allah. <laughs> no. I wouldn't, said Ron in a very quiet voice. Oh no, I wouldn't. Şuan var ya, şuan kafayı yiyeceğim. Ben bu ikisi niye olmadı, olmadı ama kitapta da. Yedinci kitabın bilmem, ta ebesinin nikahına kadar kaldılar falan öyle. No, I wouldn't, dedi. Bu iş nasıl, ne olacak da olmayacak. 
ne olacak? İşte Ron şans iksiri içtiğini düşün çok güzel oynadığı için herkes Weasley, Weasley bunu kutlarken falan Lavender bunu dudağa yapışacak. Bu da böyle reddetmeyecek, reddetmeyecek. Hermione sinirlenecek, McLagan'a kayacak falan. Onu McLagan'a kaydığını görünce Ron böyle şey olacak falan. Şanssızlık yani. Lavender bozacak olayı. Fucking hell bitch tamam mı? Gerçekten not cool yani. Yine ben bir durayım burada. Devam. İçim acıyor, içim. İçim acıyor. Harry missed the ball, hit the ball and shattered it. He parted his destiny, poking the pieces with his wand and the ball sprang back together again. The crash of ever appeared to have awoken Ron and Hermione to Harry's presence. Hermione looked flustered and immediately started fussing about for her copy of Flesh eating trees of the world to find out the correct way to juice Snargaluf pots. Ron, on the other hand, looked sheepish but also rather pleased with himself. Hand it over, Harry said Hermione hurriedly. It says you're supposed to puncture them with something sharp. Harry passed her the pot in the bowl. He and Ron both snapped their goggles back over their eyes and died once more for the stump. It was not as though he was really surprised. Thought Harry as he wrestled with a thorny wine intent upon throttling him. He had had an inkling that this might happen sooner or later, but he was not sure how he felt about it. He and Cho were now too embarrassed to look at each other, let alone talk to each other. But if Ron and Hermione started going out together, then split up, could their friendship survive it? I remembered the few weeks when they had not been talking to each other in the third year. They had not enjoyed trying to bridge the distance between them. And then, what if they didn't split up? What if they became like Bill and Fleur, and it became excruciatingly, excru, excruciatingly embarrassing to be in their presence so that he was shut out for good? Gotcha, I had Ron, pulling a second pot from the stump just as Harmony managed to burst the first one open so that the ball was full of tubers wriggling like pale green worms. The rest of the lesson passed without further mention of Slugorn's party. Although he watched his two friends more closely over the next few days, Ron and Harmony did not seem any different except that they were a little politer to each other than usual. He supposed he would <laughs> just have to wait to see what happened under the influence of water beer in Slagorn's dimly lit room on the night of the party. He supposed he would just have to wait to see what happened under the influence of water beer in Slagorn's dimly lit room on the night of the party. On which the pedos oluyormuş ya. Um, niye olmamış ama ki ya? Ya fucking gel niye olmamış ya? Yine durayım. In the meantime, however, he had more pressing worries. Katie Bell was still in St. Hemungo's hospital with no prospect of leaving, which meant that the promising Gryffindor team he had been training so carefully since September was one chase short kept putting off replacing Katie in the hope that she would return, but their opening match against Lillian was looming, and he finally had to accept that she would not be back in time to play. He did not think he could stand another full house try out. With a sinking feeling that had little to do with Quidditch, he cornered Dean Thomas after transfiguration one day. Most of the class had already left, although several twittering yellow birds were still zooming around the room. All of Harmony's creation, nobody else had succeeded in conjuring so much as a feather from Team Air. Are you still interested in playing Chaser? Well, yeah, of course, said Dean excitedly over Dean's shoulder. He saw Seamus Finnegan slamming his books into his bag, looking sore. One of the reasons why Harry would have preferred not to have to ask Dean to play was that he knew Seamus would not like. Bir dakika. One of the reasons why Harry would have preferred not to have to ask Dean to play was that he knew Seamus would not like it. On the other hand, he had to do what was best for the team, and Dean had outflown Seamus at the tryouts. Bir dakika, anlamadım. One of the reasons why 
he would have preferred not to have to ask Dean to play was it he knew Simmons would not like it. On the other hand, Tom, Dean is not the same as Simmons is the same as Jay Chin, but Dean is not the same as Simmons. Takan is the same as Dean, because Simmons is the same as Dean. Well, then you're in, said Hedy. There is a practice tonight at 7 o'clock. Roy said Dean, Cheers, Hedy. Why am I can't wait to tell Ginny? He sprinted out of the room, leaving Hedy and Simmons alone together. An uncomfortable moment made no easier when a bird dropping landed on Simmons's head. As one, as one, as one of, as one of Ermuni's canaries whizzed over them. Simmons, Simmons was not the only person disgruntled by the choice of Katie's substitute. There was much muttering in the common room about the fact that he had now chosen. Two of his classmates for the team, as he had endured much worse muttering than this in, in his school career, he was not particularly bothered. But all the same, the pressure was increasing to provide a win in the upcoming match against Lidlin. If Gryffindor won, he knew that the whole house would forget that they had criticized him and swear that they had always known it was a great team. If they lost, well, he thought wryly. He had still endured worse mutinies. He had no reason to regret his choice once he saw Dean fly that evening. He worked well with Ginny and the Mazza. The Beaters, Pigs, and Kovoth Co were getting better all the time. The only problem was Ron. He had known all along that Ron was an inconsistent player who suffered from nerves and a lack of confidence, and unfortunately, the looming prospect of the opening game of the season seemed to have brought out all his old insecurities. After letting in half a dozen goals, most of them scored by Ginny, his technique became wilder and wilder until he finally punched an oncoming Demanza Robbins in the mouth. It was an, it was an accident. I'm sorry, Demanza. Really sorry. Ron shooted after her as she, as she zigzagged back to the ground, dripping blood everywhere. I just panicked, Ginny said angrily, landing next to Demans and examining her fat lip. You prat, Ron. Look at the state of her. I can't fix that, said Harry, landing beside the two girls, pointing his wand at Demans's mouth and saying, a pisky. And Ginny, don't call Ron a prat. You're not the captain of this team. Well, you seem too busy to call him a prat, and I told someone should. He forced himself not to laugh. Well, you seem too busy to call him a prat, and I told someone should. He forced himself not to laugh. Niye gülmemeye zorlamış kendini düşünüp geliyorum. Anlamadım. Devam. In the year, everyone, let's go. Overall, it was one of the worst practices they had had all term. Though Harry did not feel that honesty was the best policy when they were this close to the match. Good work, everyone. I think we'll flatten Slytherin, he said bracingly, and the chasers and beaters left the changing room, looking reasonably happy with themselves. I played like a sack of dragon dung, said Ron, in a hollow voice, when the door had swung shut behind Ginny. No, you didn't, said Harry firmly. You're the best keeper I tried out, Ron. Your only problem is nerves. He kept up a relentless flow of encouragement all the way back to the castle, and by the time they reached the second floor, Ron was looking marginally more cheerful. When he pushed open the tapestry to take their usual shortcut up to Gryffindor Tower, however, they found themselves looking at Dean and Ginny, who were locked in a close embrace and kissing fiercely as though glued together. <laughs> It was as though something large and scaly erupted into life in his stomach. Glowing at his insides, hot blood seemed to flow his brain so that all thought was extinguished, replaced by a savage urge to jinx Dean into a jelly. Resting with this sudden madness, he heard Ron's voice as though from a great distance away. Ovi! <laughs> Dean and Ginny broke apart and looked around. What, said Ginny. I don't want to find my own sister snorting people in public. This was a deserted corridor till you came, but in, said Ginny. 
Dean was looking embarrassed. He gave Harry a shift to grin that Harry did not return. As a newborn monster inside him was roaring for Dean's instant dismissal from the team. Uh, come on, Ginny, said Dean. Let's go back to the common room. You go, said Ginny. I want a word with my dear brother. Dean left, looking as though he was not sorry to depart the scene. Right, said Ginny, tossing her long red hair out of her face and glaring at Ron. Let's get this straight once and for all. Bu lafa bayılıyor ama. Let's get this straight once and for all. Bunda şey diyordu bunu. Tony Montana sosaya diyordu. Let's get this straight now. Böyle falan. Şimdi rapçi söyleyebilir bu tanıyorum maalesef. Öyle ezberli rapçi söylemekten biraz özel Tony Montana. Onun için başka bir gün özgürlüğüm daha iyiken yapacağız. Ama Tony Montana diyor. Tony Montana yazın. Let's get this straight virgül now. Yazın o de görün. Güzel rapçi devam. It's none of your business who I go out with or what I do with them, Ron. Yeah, it is, said Ron, just as angrily. Do you think I want people say my sister is a... A what, should a genie, throwing your phone. A what, exactly. It doesn't mean anything, genie, said Harry automatically. Though the monster was roaring, it's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Though the monster was roaring, it's a problem of Ron's verse. Oh, yes, he does, he said, flaring up at Hiddy, just because he has never snogged anyone in his life, just because the best kiss he has ever had is from our Auntie Maria. Shut your mouth, beloved Ron, by passing red and turning maroon. No, I will not, yell Ginny beside herself. I've seen you with phlegm, hoping she'll kiss you on the cheek every time you see her. It's pathetic. If you went out and got a bit of snogging down yourself, you wouldn't mind so much that everyone else does it. Burası, burası Hermione ve Ron'un bu kitapta olmayıp daha da sonra olacağını şey oluyor. Çünkü, çünkü, çünkü bu Ginny'nin lafları böyle bıçak gibi batıyor ona. Ron diyor ki böyle kendi kendine ulan ilk fırsatta o zaman diyor onların yaptığı şeyleri ben de yapmış olacağım diyor ve bir daha hiç kimse diyor benim yeterliliğimi sorgulayamayacak diyor böyle kesinlikle falan. Bu burası bozuyormuş bu işi maalesef. Of. Düşünce bak diye. <gülüyor> Oğlum çok üzücü ya. Niye gülüyorsun o zaman aptala? I don't know. Devam. Ron had pulled out his wand too and he stepped swiftly between them. You don't know what you're talking about, Ron Roar, trying to get a clear shot at Ginny around Hitty, who was now standing in front of her with his arms outstretched. Just because I don't do it in public, Ginny screamed with derisive laughter, trying to push Hitty out of the way. Been kissing pig vision, have you? Or have you got a picture of Auntie Maria stashed under your pillow? You, a streak of orange light, flew under Hedy's left arm and missed Ginny by inches. Hedy pushed Ron up against the wall. Don't be stupid. Hedy snogged Chow Chang, shouted Ginny, who sounded close to tears now. And Hermione snogged with your crown. It's only you who acts like it's something disgusting, Ron. And that's because you've got about as much experience as a, as a 12 year old. And with that, she stormed away. Hedy quickly let go of Ron. The look on his face was murderous. They both stood there, breathing heavily, until Mrs. Norris, fixed cat, appeared around the corner, which broke the tension. Come on, said Hedy, as the sound of Fitch's shuffling feet reached their ears. They hurried up the stairs and along a seventh floor corridor. Oi, all of the way around barked at a small girl, who jumped in fright and dropped a bottle of top spawn. Hedy hardly noticed the sound of shattering glass. He felt disoriented, dizzy, being struck by a lightning bolt must be something like this. Being struck by a lightning bolt must be something like this. It's just because she is Ron's sister, he told himself. You just didn't like seeing her kissing Dean because she is Ron's sister. But I'm be- <laughs> into his mind came an image of that same deserted corridor with himself kissing Ginny instead. I mean, the monster in his chest curled horror. <laughs> but then he saw Ron ripping open the tapestry curtain and drawing his wand on Harry, shooting things like betrayal of trust, supposed to be my friend. Kafasından görüyorum. Şöyle diyor, ne oluyor falan. 
Do you think Hamoni did not come from as abruptly as he approached the fat lady? Ha, bir şekilde işin şey tarafı da var. Şu an kendisine acıma düşüncesine dair şüpheler Rum'un kafasında oluştu Jane'in bu laflarından sonra. Eşit hissetmiyor. Hermione bana acı, acıyacak mı? Hermione beni küçümseyecek mi? Falan şüpheleri oluştu falan. Denk olması gerektiğini hissediyor falan. Yep, that's the one. That's the one, evet. Burada yine bir duralım diyecek bir şey var mıdır? Devam. Do you think Hermione did snog Crom Ronas abruptly as they approached the fat lady? That he gave a guilty start and wrenched his imagination away from a corridor in which no room intruded, in which he and Ginny were quite alone. What he said confusedly, oh, uh, the honest answer was yes, but he did not want to give it. However, Ron seemed to gather the words from the look on Lily's face. Did he growled, he said, darkly to the fat lady. And they climbed through the portrait hall into the common room. Neither of them mentioned Ginny or Harmony again. Indeed, they barely spoke to each other that evening and got into bed in silence, each absorbed in his own thoughts. He lay awake for a long time, looking up at the canopy of his poor poster and trying to convince himself that his feelings for Ginny were entirely elder brotherly. They had lived, had they not, like brother and sister all summer, playing Quidditch. <clears throat> <coughs> teasing Ron and having a laugh about Bill and Flem. He had known Ginny for years now. It was natural that he should feel protective, natural that he should want to look out for her. <coughs> want to rip Dean limb from limb for kissing her. No. Want to rip Dean limb from limb for kissing her. No. He would have to control that particular brotherly feeling. Ron gave a great grunting snore. She's Ron's sister, Harry told himself firmly. Ron's sister, she's out of bounds. He will not risk his friendship with Ron for anything. He punched his pillow into a more comfortable shape. Ha, sinir sinir vurmuş, böyle yastığını ayarlamış. And waited for sleep to come, trying his utmost not to allow, allow his toes to stay anywhere near Ginny. He awoke next morning feeling slightly dazed and confused by a series of dreams in which Ron had chased him with a beater's bed. But by midday, he would have happily exchanged the dream Ron for the real one. It was not only cold shouldering Ginny and Dean, but also treating a hurt and bewildered harmony with an icy, sneering indifference. I mean... Who was not only called shouldering Ginny and Dean. But also treating a hurt and bewildered harmony with an icy sneering indifference. <gülüyor> of çok üzülüyorum şu an ya. Hiç var ya hiç bunları böyle okumalıydım ben. Of. Fucking hell tam da oluyordu ya. O bu kadar tutarlı ki şu an olmuyor bu şu anda biliyor musun? Hani hani hani ben yine duruyorum diyecek bir şey var mı? Duruyorum da diyecek bir şey gelmiyor ki aklıma. Şu an duygular, emotionlar çok yüksek ben. De. Onların şeyi yok. Üzülüyorum yani. Devam Abdullah. Acılarımız geçecek eğer yedi kitabı da yazdan önce bitirirsek. Evet. What was more, Ron seemed to have become overnight as touchy and ready to lash out as the average blast and its crude. It is spent a day attempting to keep the peace between Ron and Harmony with no success. Finally, Harmony departed for bed in high dudgeon, and Ron stalked off to the boys' dormitory after swearing angrily at several frightened first years for looking at him. What the hell are you looking at falan bir şeyler etti. Ama helden de fazlasını söylemiş. What the fuck are you looking at? Böyle bir şey var mı? Who the fuck do you think you're looking at? Falan gibi bir şey herhalde. Fucking hell falan. Neyse. To Harry's dismay, Ron's new aggression did not wear off over the next few days. 
worse still, it coincided with an even deeper dip in his keeping skills, which made him still more aggressive, so that during the final Quidditch practice before Saturday's match, he failed to save every single goal the chasers aimed at him, but blowed at everybody so much that he reduced the Mazar Robbins to tears. Tam bu, buna devam etmeden şey diyeceğim. Harry'nin böyle şans iksiri veriyormuş gibi bir şey yapması falan aslında Ron'a aşırı büyük bir kıyak. Yani Harry çok sağlam bir arkadaşlık örneği göstermiş oluyor bence orada. Çünkü cidden her şey çocuğun üstüne geliyor şu an. Zaten hassas biri biliyoruz. Bir kere sinirlendi mi sinirin kolayını atamıyor falan. O cinin dedikleri falan böyle bıçak darbeleri gibiydi yani böyle. Ben deydim o bıçak darbeleri Ron'la beraber. O derece böyle şiddetliydi hani. Neyse hani bir, birisinin zaten böyle şey falan, dengesiz falan bir tip biliyoruz yani. Herkese bağırıyor, çağırıyor falan sanki herkesin suçuymuş gibi. Hani birisinin en azından bir iyilik yapması lazım yani burada. Onu da Harry yapıyor. Tam da doğru iyiliği yapıyor. Gayet böyle anlamlı ve işlevsel bir iyilik yapıyor falan. İyi. You shut up and leave her alone, shut up. Peaks. Who was about two thirds Ron's hate, though admittedly carrying a heavy bet. <clears throat> Enough blood, Harry, who had seen Ginny glowering in Ron's direction and remembering her reputation as an accomplished caster of the bet buggy hags, soared over to intervene before things got out of hand. Peaks, go and pick up the bludgers. Demaza, pull yourself together. You played really well today. Ron, he waited until the rest of the team were out of earshot before saying it. You're my best mate, but carry on treating the rest of the team like this, and I'm going to kick you off the team. He really thought for a moment that Ron might hit him, but then something much worse happened. Ron seemed to sag on his broom. All the fight went out of him, and he said, I resign. <clears throat> I resign. I'm pathetic. You're not pathetic, and you're not resigning, said Harry fiercely. Seizing Ron by the front of his robes. You can save anything when you're on form. It's a mental problem you've got. You calling me mental? Yeah, maybe I am. They glared at each other for a moment. Then Ron shook his head wearily. I know you haven't got any time to find another keeper, so I play tomorrow. But if we lose, and we will, I'm taking myself off the team. Nothing Harry said made any difference. He tried boosting Ron's confidence all through dinner, but Ron was too busy being grumpy and surly with harmony to notice. Harry persisted in the common room that evening with his assertion that the whole team would be devastated if Ron left was somewhat undermined by the fact that the rest of the team was sitting in a huddle in a distant corner, clearly muttering about Ron and casting him nasty looks. He persisted in the common room that evening, but his assertion that the whole team would be devastated if Ron left was somewhat undermined. Tamam. Şey diyormuş Ron'a, sen gidersen bütün takım mahvolur falan ama bütün takım başka bir kenarda köşede durup Ron'a bakıp böyle fısıltılı fısıltılı Ron'un arkasında dedikodu yapıyorlar zaten bir boka yaramıyor, düzgün üstlük bize laf atıyor falan. O iş işlemez diye kendisini de sonuca varıyor kendi kafasında. Sen gidersen bütün takım mahvolur lafını söyleme şeyi, hamlesi. Finally, Harry tried getting angry again in the hope of provoking Ron into a defiant and hopefully goal saving attitude. But this strategy didn't appear to work any better than encouragement. Ron went to bed as dejected and hopeless as ever. Harry lay away for a very long time in the darkness. He did not want to lose the upcoming match. Not only was it his first as captain, but he was determined to beat Draco Malfoy at Quidditch, even if he could not yet prove his suspicions about him. Yet if Ron played as he had done in the last few practices, their chances of winning were very slim. If only there was something he could do to make Ron pull himself together, Make him play at the top of his form, something that would ensure that Ron had a really good day. And the answer came to Harry in one sudden glorious stroke of inspiration. 
Burada güzel bir nokta var. O da şu hani Slagorn şans iksirini böyle birisinin sormasını beklediydi falan ya böyle tam. İşte profesör bu iksirin adını söylemediniz falan diye. Hani Harry de tam böyle döktükten sonra birisinin ne döktüğün Ron'un balkabasuyun içine demesini bekleyecek falan. Hani sadece iksiri almadı Slagorn'dan. Aynı zamanda iksirin sunuluşunu da taklit etmiş olacak falan. That's a good point. Evet. Burada bir duralım diyecek bir şey var mıydı? Devam. Breakfast was the usual excitable affair next morning. The students hissed and booed loudly as every member of the Gryffindor team entered the great hall. Harry glanced at the ceiling and saw a clear pale blue sky. A good old man. Sanki silterin neredi? The Gryffindor table, a solid mess of red and gold, cheered as Harry and Ron approached. Harry grinned and bared. Ron grimaced weakly and shook his head. Cheer up, Ron called Lavender. I know you'll be brilliant. Ron ignored her. Tea areas, Tim, coffee, pumpkin juice. Anything, said Ron glumly, take a moody bite of toast. A few minutes later, Harmony, who had become so tired of Ron's recent unpleasant behavior that she had not come down to breakfast with them, paused on her way up the table. Like a, few, a few minutes later, Harmony, who had become so tired of Ron's recent unpleasant behavior that she had not come down to breakfast with them, paused on her way up the table. Like, buraya anlamadım, anlayıp geliyorum. Herhalde böyle Ron'un uyuzluğundan, rahatsızlığından rahatsız olup böyle kahvaltıya gelmemiş en başta ama şimdi gelmiş falan. Böyle anladım. Devam. Pause on her way up the table. Horrible feeling she has tentatively her eyes <clears throat> on the back of Ron's head. Fine, said Harry, who was concentrating on handing Ron a glass of pumpkin juice. There you go, Ron, drink up. Ron had just raised a glass to his lips when Harmony spoke sharply. Don't drink that, Ron. Both Harry and Ron looked up at her. Why not, said Ron. Harmony was now staring at Harry as though she could not believe her eyes. You just put something in that drink. Excuse me, said Harry. You heard me. I saw you. You just tipped something into Ron's drink. You've got the bottle in your hand right now. I don't know what you're talking about, said Harry, stowing the little bottle hastily in his pocket. Ron, I warn you, don't drink it, Harmony said again, alarmed. But Ron picked up the glass, drained it in one gulp, and said, Stop bossing me around, Hermione. Hani... <gülüyor> Dediklerimin haklı olduğunu kanıta. Stop bossing me around, Hermione. Yani resmen şey, ben kimseyi öpmeden Hermione ile sevgili olmaya başlarsam, Hermione birini öpmüş biri olarak ve dünya üzerinde çıkmış en cool olabilecek insanlardan biriyle sevgili olmuş olan birisi olaraktan, Beni bostlayıp duracak, beni küçük düşürüp duracak, beni bastıracak, beni şey edecek falan. Bir lavender gerekiyor. En azından Ron'un kendi ikna olabilir, olabilir tesi için. Yes, yes, evet. Bir lavender gerekiyor. Burada yine bir duruyorum diyecek bir şey var mıdır? Devam. She looked scandalized, bending low so that only he could hear her. She is. You should be expelled for that. I never have believed it of you, Harry. Harku is talking, he whispered back. Confused anyone lately? She stormed up the table away from them. He watched her go without regret. Hammond had never really understood what a serious business Quidditch was. He then looked around at Ron, who was smacking his lips. Nearly times a day, blithely, the frosty grass crunched under food as they strode down to the stadium. Pretty lucky the weather is this good, eh? Harry asked Ron. Yes, said Ron, who was pale and sick looking. Ginny and Demenza were already wearing their Quidditch robes and waiting in the changing room. Conditions look ideal, said Ginny, ignoring Ron. And guess what? The Slytherin chaser Raisy. He took a bludger in the head yesterday during their practice. Then he's too sore to play. And even better than that, Malfoy's gone off sick too. What, said Harry, feeling around to stare at her. He's ill. What's wrong with him? No idea, but it's great for us, said Ginny brightly. 
They're playing hard for instead. He is in my ear and he is an idiot. It is smiled back vaguely, but as he pulled on his card robes, his mind was far from Quidditch. Malfoy had once before claimed he could not play due to injury, but on that occasion he had made sure the whole match was rescheduled for a time that suited the Slytherins better. Why was he now happy to let a substitute go on? Was he really ill or was he faking? Fish, isn't it? He said in an undertone to Ron. In an undertone to Ron. Undertone to Ron. Tone to Ron. Following Dishman. Malfoy not playing. Like I call it, said Ron, looking slightly more animated. And ways you off too. He's their best score scorer. I didn't fancy. Hey, <laughs> he said suddenly, freezing halfway through, pulling on his keeper's gloves and staring at Terry. What? I. You. Ron had dropped his voice. He looked both scared and excited. My drink, my pumpkin juice, you didn't. He raised his eyebrows, but said nothing except, but said nothing except. We'll be starting in about five minutes. You'd better get your boots on. They walked out onto the pitch to tumultuous roars and boos. One end of the stadium was totally red and gold. The other, a sea of green and silver. Many Hufflepuffs and Ravenclaws had taken sides too. Amid as all the yielding, yelling and clapping, Harry could distinctly hear the roar of Junalogo's famous lion talk head. He stepped up to Madame Hooch, the referee, who was standing ready to release the balls from the crate. Captains shake hands, she said, and he had his hand crushed by the new student captain, Urkuhart. Urkuhart. Urku heart, man your brooms on the whistle. Three, two, one, the whistle sounded. Harry and others kicked off hard from the frozen ground and they were away. Harry soared around the perimeter of the grounds, looking around for the snitch and keeping one eye on Harper, who was zigzagging far below him. Then a voice that was jetting the different to the usual commentators started up. Well, there they go, and I think we're all surprised to see the team that Potter's put together this year. Many thought, given Ronald Weasley's pitchy performance as keeper last year, that he might be off the team, but of course, a close personal friendship with the captain does help. These words were greeted with jeers and applause from the Slytherin end of the pitch. He craned around on his broom to look toward the commentator's podium. A tall, skinny boy, Skinny blonde boy with an upturned nose was standing there, talking into the magical megaphone that had once been Lee Jordan's. He recognized Zachariah Smith, a Hufflepuff player whom he heartily disliked. Oh, and here comes Slytherin's first attempt on goal. It's Urku Hart streaking down the pitch, and here is Tomac turned over. Wizzy saves it. Well, he's bound to get lucky sometimes, I suppose. That's right, Smith, he is, Johan Barmur. That's right, Smith, he is, Mütür Teddy, grinning to himself as he died amongst the chasers with his eyes searching all around for some hint of a user snitch. Where the Benji Bidimar. That's right, Smith, he is, Mütür Teddy, grinning to himself. Koymadını biliyor, gerçek anlamda. Hani Harry'nin o din tarafını düşünen beyninin tarafı Nasıl böyle Slagorn'un o pazarla diye böyle şeyi Felix Felix'i hani birisinin sormasını bekledi. Profesör bu ilk sınavını söylemediniz diye. Eli de aynı şekilde tam böyle Hermione Görcü'nü bildiği bir zaman döktü gibi bir şey oldu falan. Pazarladı falan. Aynı zamanda böyle şanslanacağını biliyor ama şans iksirini kullanmadığı halde falan. Ama bunu bilmesinden de değil. Hani böyle grinning to himself. Kendi kendine güldü. Tam o kendi kendine güldüğü yer bu mütüringi yaptıktan sonra falan. Di. Felix Felicis'in aslında gerçek bir iksir olmayışı. Placebo oluş. Placebo mu deniyor? Aynen. Di. Evet. Burada bir duruyorum, düşünüyorum diyecek bir şey var mıdır? Devam. That's right, Smith. He is me too. Terry. Grinning to himself. Is he died amongst the... <coughs> the chasers with his eyes searching all around for some hint of the elusive snitch. With half an hour of the game gone, Gryffindor were leading 60 points to zero. I need...
after on having made some truly spectacular saves, some by the very tips of his gloves, and Ginny ha having scored four of Gryffindor's six goals. This effectively stopped Zakaria's wondering loudly whether the two busies were only there because he really liked them, and he started on pigs and cold instead. Of course, co Kowalt's Oklahoma isn't really the usual build for a beater, says Zakaria's loftily. They generally got a bit more muscle. With a bludger at him, he recalled to Kud as he zoomed past, but Kud, grinning broadly, chose to aim the next bludger at Harper instead, who was just passing Harry in the opposite direction. Harry was pleased to hear the dull tongue that meant the bludger had found its mark. It seemed as though Gryffindor could do no wrong. Again and again they scored, and again and again at the other end of the pitch, Ron said, goes with a pet and ease. He was actually smiling now, and when the crowd greeted them, particularly good, say, with the with rousing chores of the old favorite business, our king, he pretended to conduct them from high. Ne? Bir dakika, bunu anlamadım. Buraya anlayıp geliyorum. Şimdi kelimeye baktım yine tam emin olamadım. Böyle yönetiyor da nasıl yönetiyor falan bana şey iyi bir yerli. Bir daha okuyalım. He was actually smiling now and when the crowd greeted a particularly good say with the rousing chores of the old favorite, Beasley is our king. Tamam. He pretended to conduct them from on high. Hani böyle süpürgesi yukarıda zaten şöyle falan bir şey yapıyor herhalde. Bu yani sanırım. He pretended to conduct them from on high. Hani sanki böyle takımın en güçlü elemanı buymuş da herkes, o takımdaki herkes onun böyle övgüsünü almak istiyormuş diye de ona bakıyorlar böyle. Bu da böyle yeah falan. Yani sanki takımda yeah yapacak insan böyle hepsinin bakıp izleyeceği bir şekilde takım kaptanı ya da takımın en güçlü oyuncusu falan oluyordu bu sefer ama Ron yaptı falan. O derece iyice özgüveni falan yerine geldi falan. Olabilir mi? Burada bir duralım tekrar. Ama büyük ihtimal bir şey söylemeyeceğim. Devam. <coughs> Things is something special today, doesn't he? Said a snide voice. And it was nearly knocked off his broom as Harper collided with him hard and deliberately. <coughs> Oof. Think, thinks he's something special today, doesn't he? Said a snide voice. And Harry was nearly knocked off his broom as Harper collided with him hard and deliberately. Their blood traitor pal derken, but a huge back was turned. And though Gryffindor's blow shot it in anger, by the time she looked around, Harper had already sped off. His shoulder aching, he raced after him, determined to ram him back. And I think Harper of Slytherin seen the cinch, said Zakaria Smith through his megaphone. Yes, he's certainly seen something Potter hasn't. Smith really was an idiot, thought Harry. Hadn't he noticed them collide? But next moment, his stomach seemed to drop out of the sky. Smith was right and Harry was wrong. Harper had not sped upward at random. He had spotted what Harry had not. <coughs> The snitch was speeding along high above them, glinting brightly against the clear blue sky. He accelerated. The wind was whistling in his ears so that it drowned all sound of Smith's commentary or the crowd. But Harper was still ahead of him, and Gryffindor was only a hundred points up. If Harper got there first, Gryffindor had lost, and now Harper was fit from air, his hand outstretched. Oi, Harper reality in desperation. How much did Malfoy pay you to come on instead of him? He did not know what made him say it, but Harper did a double take. He fumbled the snitch that slipped through his fingers and shot right past it. Ne? He did not know what made him say it, but Harper did a double take. Şu double take neymiş? Uble take. Reaction to something unexpected immediately after one's first reaction. Böyle bir şey oluyor. Tekliyor herhalde. He fumbled the snitch. Umble. 
alamamış. Let it slip through his fingers and shot right past it. Yani düpedüz şey olmadı. Ben burada sanki çok önceden ilk okuduğum zaman bilerek almıyor gibi anladıydım. İngilizce mi okuduğum zaman, Türkçe okuduğum zamanlar mı hatırlamıyor. Ama burada olan şey şey bence. Lafın doğruluğunu bir anlık ona tereddüt gelmesinden anlıyor böyle. O tereddütten faydalanıp Harry yakalıyor. Harry made a great swipe for the tiny fluttering ball and caught it. Burayı bir kere daha yapacağım emin olmak için. Devam. Yes, Harry yelled. Wheeling around, <coughs> he hurtled back toward the ground. The snitch held high in his hand. Snitch, snitch, snitch, snitch, snitch. As the crowd realized what had happened, the great shoot went up that almost round the sound of the whistle that signaled the end of the game. Resmen 250'ye sıfır falan yerdiler herhalde. Jimmy where are you going yelled Harry, who had found himself trapped in the midst of a mess mid air hug with the rest of the team. But Jimmy sped right on past them until, with an almighty crash, she collided with the commentator's podium. As the crowd shrieked and loud, the Gryffindor team landed beside the wreckage of wood under which Zacharias was feeling stirring. Harry heard Ginny saying blithely to an irate, irate Professor McConaughey, forgot to break, Professor, sorry, who had found himself trapped in the middle of a mass mid air hug with the rest of the team, but Ginny sped right on. Passed them until, with an almighty crash, she collided with the commentators. Podium, as the crowd shrieked and laughed, the Gryffindor team landed beside the wreckage of food under which Zacharias was feeling stirring. He heard Ginny saying blithely to an irate Professor McGonagall, "Forgot to break, Professor." Sorry, laughing, he broke free of the rest of the team and hugged Ginny, but let go very quickly. Avoiding her gaze, he clapped a cheering Ron on the back instead as, all enmity forgotten, the Gryffindor team left the pitch arm in arm. He clapped a cheering Ron on the back instead as, all enmity forgotten, the Gryffindor team left the pitch arm in arm, punching the air and waving to their supporters. The atmosphere in the changing room was jubilant. Party up in the common room, seems sad, yeah, Dean exuberantly. Come on, Ginny, the Maza. Ron Harry were the last two in the changing room. They were just about to leave when Hermione entered. She was twisting her Gryffindor scarf in her hands and looked upset but determined. I want a word with you, Harry. She took a deep breath. You shouldn't have done it. You heard Slughorn is illegal. What are you going to do? Turn us in, demanded Ron. What are you two talking about? Asked Harry, turning away to hang up his robes so that neither of them would see him grinning. You know perfectly well what we're talking about, said Hammond. She really, you spiked Ron's juice with like a portion at breakfast, Felix Felicis. No, I didn't, said Harry, turning back to face them both. Yes, you did, Harry, and that's why everything went right. There were Slytherin players missing and Ron saved everything. I didn't put it in, said Harry, grinning broadly. He slipped his hand inside his jacket pocket and drew out the tiny bottle that Hermione had seen in his hand that morning. It was full of golden portion and the cork was still tightly sealed with wax. I wanted Ron to think I'd done it, so I faked it when I knew you were looking. He looked at Ron. You said everything because you felt lucky. You did all yourself. He pocketed the portion again. There really wasn't anything in my pumpkin juice, Ron said, astounded. But the weather is good, and the ways you couldn't play. I honestly haven't been given like a portion. Harry shook his head. Ron gaped at him for a moment, then rounded on Hermione, imitating her voice. You added Felix Felix's to Ron's juice this morning. That's why he saved everything. See, I can save gods without help, Hermione. Jiton demiş mi? You said everything because you felt hayır o değil. There were certain players missing and Ron said everything. I never said you couldn't, Ron. 
you thought you'd been given it too, but Ron had already strode past her out of the door with his broomstick over his shoulder and set Harry into the sudden silence. He had not expected his plan to backfire like this. Shall, shall we go up to the party then? You go, said Harmony, blinking back tears. I am sick of Ron at the moment. I don't know what I am supposed to have done. And she stormed out of the changing room too. He walked slowly back up the grounds towards the castle through the crowd. Many of whom shouted congratulations at him, but he felt a great sense of that done. He'd been sure that if Ron won the match, he and Hermione would be friends again immediately. He did not see how he could possibly explain to Hermione that what she had done to offend Ron was kiss Victor Crumb. He did not see how he could possibly explain to Hermione that what she had done to offend Ron was kiss Victor Crumb. Victor Crumb, not when the offense had occurred so long ago. He could not see Hermione at the Gryffindor celebration party, which was in full swing when he arrived. Renewed cheers and clapping greeted his appearance, and he was soon surrounded by a mob of people congratulating him. What with trying to shake off the creepy brothers who want a blow by blow match analysis, and a large group of girls that encircled him, laughing at his these amusing comments and betting their eyelids. It was some time before he could try and find Ron. <clears throat> At last, he extricated himself from Romil Tavane, who was hinting heavily that she would like to go to Slugorn's Christmas party with him. As he was ducking toward the drinks table, he walked straight into Ginny, Arnold the pygmy puff riding on her shoulder and crocheting moving hopefully at her heels. Looking for Ron, she asked, smirking, he's over there, the filthy hypocrite. He looked into the corner she was indicating. There, in full view of the whole room, stood Ron wrapped so closely around Lavender Brown. Lavender Brown, it was hard to tell whose hands were whose. It looks like he's eating her face, doesn't it, said Ginny, dispassionately, but I suppose he's got to refine his technique somehow. Buraya anlamadım, anlayıp geliyor. Hani şeyi anlamadım, neden şuradaki şu bat kullanılıyor? Hani diyor ki böyle kızın suratını yiyormuş gibi görünüyor, öyle değil mi diyor. Böyle iğrenmiş bir şekilde. But I suppose he's got to refine his techniques somehow. Ama düşünüyorum ki diyor, he, herhalde şey diyor. But I suppose he's got to refine his techniques somehow. Öyle da böyle düzelecek diyor, yapa yapa diyor herhalde. Good game Harry. She patted him on the arm. He felt a swooping sensation in his stomach, but then she walked off to have herself to more but with beer. Crochet trotted after her, his yellow eyes fixed upon Arnold. He returned away from Ron, who did not look like he would be surf surfacing soon, just as the portrait hall was closing. With a sinking feeling, He thought he saw a mane of bushy brown hair whipping out of sight. He darted forward, sidestepped Romy Lavaine again, and pushed open the portrait of the fat lady. The corridor outside seemed to be deserted. Harmony, he found her in the first unlocked classroom he tried. She was sitting on the teacher's desk, alone except for a small ring of twittering yellow birds circling her head, which she had clearly just conjured out of mid-air. And he could not help admiring her spell work at a time like this. Oh, hello, Hedy, she said in a brittle voice. I was just practicing. Yeah, they're uh, really good, said Hedy. He had no idea what to say to her. He was just wondering whether there was any chance that she had not noticed wrong, that she had merely left the room because the party was a little too rowdy. Then she said in an unnaturally high pitched voice, Ron seems to be enjoying the celebrations. Uh, does he, said Harry. Don't pretend you didn't see him, said Harmony. He wasn't exactly hiding it, was 
the door behind them burst open to hear his horror. Ron came in, laughing, pulling Lavender by the hand. Oh, he said, drawing up short at the side of Harry and Hermione. Oops, said Lavender, and she backed out of the room, giggling. The door swung shut behind her. There was a horrible, swelling, blowing silence. Hermione was staring at Ron, who refused to look at her, but said with an odd mixture of bravado and awkwardness, Hi, Harry, wondered where you'd got to. Hammer slid off the desk. The little flock of golden birds continued to twitter in circles around her head so that she looked like a strange, feathery model of the solar system. Usually, the lavender waiting outside, she said quietly, she'll wonder where you've gone. She walked very slowly and directly toward the door. He glanced at Ron, who was looking relieved that nothing worse had happened. A pugno came and shrieked from the doorway. He spun around to see Hermione pointing her wand at Ron, her expression wild. The little flock of birds was spitting like a hail of fat golden bullets toward Ron, who yelled and covered his face with his hands, but the birds attacked, picking and clawing at every bit of flesh they could reach. Get him off me! Get them! Get him off me! Get them out of me! Give the Get them off me, and get them off me, get them off me, he yelled. But with one last look of vindictive fury, Hammer wrenched open the door and disappeared through it. He thought he heard the sob before it slammed. Chapter 15, The Unbreakable Wall, Anand. O kadar da Anand değil aslında, niye böyle dedim bilmiyorum. Bir durayım diyecek bir şey var mıdır? Nope. Hadi görüşürüz.